In the real world, supply and demand shocks often occur at the same time. And in this chapter, we will see what we can learn from combinations of these shocks and which situations we may be able to explain with them. What we will see is that many real world situations can actually be explained with such a simple framework quite well. And so it can often be used as a starting point for further considerations. So the questions that we address in this chapter are how we can analyze combined supply and demand shocks with the framework that we've um, learned previously. What determines whether prices and quantities fall or rise and how we can put this framework to use for analyzing certain real world questions. What we will consider is the car market in the COVID-19 pandemic. So we start again with our supply and demand equilibrium of the market. I don't draw the curve separately now because by now uh, this is well known. What we have is the price level on the vertical axis, quantity on the horizontal axis, the supply curve upward sloping, the demand curve downward sloping, and we have a market equilibrium at the market clearing price P star with the market clearing quantity Q star. Now suppose there is a pandemic such as the COVID-19 pandemic with lockdowns and we have supply chain disruptions. So during that time, we had difficulties to produce or import cars and car parts due to restrictions, for example, in ports in China and so on. Um, and also, of course, due to illnesses in, in, in firms. So that's a negative supply shock. At the same time, car shops were closed in many countries and there was subdued demand uh, for driving initially because uh, there was this uh, huge increase in, in uh, uh, home office and so on and so forth. And that constituted a negative demand shock for cars. Now the question is how these shocks combined affect the market for cars. So first I draw the supply shock here. So this is a leftward shift of the supply curve. So that at the new market equilibrium with the old demand curve, we would have a higher price level and a lower quantity traded in equilibrium. However, the supply shock is not the only thing that happens. We also have a negative demand shock. So now two fundamentally different situations can occur with respect to the demand shock. Here we have situation one, which is a strong demand shock as compared to the supply shock. And in this case, the demand curve would shift leftwards strongly, such that at the new equilibrium, where there is the intersection with the new uh, supply curve and the new demand curve, we would have a lower market clearing price level and a much lower quantity traded. That's arguably what happened initially in the COVID-19 pandemic. So due to the lockdowns and the huge uncertainty and so on, demand was reduced strongly, and initially at least, supply was not yet that much restricted. And so the price for cars initially fell, and the quantity traded fell substantially. However, there is also a second situation that can occur, and that is when demand only reacts slightly. So the leftward shift of the demand curve would be less pronounced, and we would end up with an equilibrium where the market clearing price is higher than the initial market clearing price in the pre-COVID-19 equilibrium, but the quantity traded is lower. Arguably, this was the case in a little bit later phases of COVID-19, when a lot of uh, fiscal measures kicked in that helped to raise demand uh, as compared to the initial COVID-19 situation. And at the same time, um, uncertainty um, reduced due to the uh, introduction of the vaccine, due to uh, new variants that were not as um, dangerous as previous variants and so on and so forth. So at um, later stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, one would um, expect to end up with a situation where the price level increases as compared to the pre-COVID-19 period, but the quantity traded is still lower. So we can summarize what we've learned up to now. Negative demand shocks and negative supply shocks combined will always lead to a situation where equilibrium quantity uh, traded definitely decreases. And this was also the case in reality in the COVID-19 pandemic in the car uh, market. So the quantity decreased substantially. The effect on the equilibrium price, however, depends on the strength 
uh, on the relative strength of the different uh, shocks. If the demand shock is severe and the supply shock comparatively moderate, prices will fall. And if it's the opposite, demand shocks are moderate and supply shock severe, then prices will rise. And in between there is a knife edge case that separates the two um, situations where the prices would stay the same. But this is just a very special case that in reality um, is very unlikely to occur. Now we can ask ourselves, however, what happens if we have a negative supply shock, but a positive demand shock. And there are many of these combinations possible that we can analyze in the framework that we have here. But this particular case with a positive demand shock, again, fits the story of uh, the pandemic. So for, for example, when lockdowns end and governments hand out uh, cash and so on and uh, do expansionary fiscal policy, as many governments did, uh, during and after the pandemic, this will likely lead to a rise in demand. And in addition, there are catch-up effects um, in terms of consumption where people uh, that were forced to stay at home during lockdowns um, had the, uh, money to spend actually on uh, certain goods. So there was a certain level of catch-up consumption going on and therefore also there was um, uh, demand um, for cars that was not satisfied during the times of the lockdowns. So that may lead to a situation where demand expands beyond the initial uh, level, uh, so beyond the initial demand curve that we had pre-COVID-19. And now we look at what happens uh, when this is the case in the framework that we've uh, seen up to now. So this would imply then that we have a leftward shift in the supply curve, that's the negative supply shock, but at the same time we get a positive demand shock, so the demand curve shifts to the right. Again, there could be two situations, so the demand curve could shift strongly, that's left for an exercise, or it could shift a little bit weaker, as it is done here, where we would then observe still a decrease in the uh, equilibrium volume traded, but a strong increase in the equilibrium price. And that's arguably what we saw in the car market after the pandemic and after the lockdowns, where prices increased strongly, but still the quantities were not yet at the level of um, uh, the times before the pandemic. So we can summarize actually the development throughout the pandemic that first demand decreases strongly due to uncertainty and lockdowns and so on. So that prices fall considerably and equilibrium quantities as well. Then, um, after the lockdowns and uh, with initial measures um, uh, of expansionary fiscal policy and with the reduction in uncertainty, uh, the uh, negative demand shock is not anymore as severe as it was initially, so that prices start to increase, although equilibrium quantity traded is still much lower. But finally, after the COVID-19 pandemic, when supply chains were still um, uh, kind of disrupted, demand started to um, be higher than before the pandemic. And in this case, quantities could still decrease, but the price level would be much higher than before the pandemic. And that's what we saw, this inflation push after the um, uh, pandemic. And in terms of the evolution of our graph, we would therefore have initially a strong leftward shift in the demand curve with lower prices and a much lower quantity, then uh, later uh, only a smaller reduction in demand as compared to the pre-COVID-19 uh, times, such that quantity is still lower, but the price level starts to increase above the level before the pandemic. And finally, an expansion in demand that still meets um, restricted supply and uh, supply chain disruptions where then the quantity is, no, uh, is only slightly lower than before the pandemic and um, the price uh, level is much higher already. So we can summarize, this is a very simple framework of a market, but it explains many facts actually and many developments quite nicely and therefore it could be used as a starting point. It should perhaps not be the final word on everything, but it could be used as a starting point to think about what happens in case of shocks that occur to markets and in case of policies that are enacted, um, certain economic policies, how will they, they affect different markets.